Hello and welcome to another episode of Distry. My name is Kirk from walruscarp.com. Today we're going to shop till we drop. <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? I'm sure Kate's already live. Hello. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm rocking the exclusive Haunted Mansion D23 Muppets wallpaper. What? Oh Gonzo's. my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah, hang on. Let me see if I can. There we go. See, that's you where can you can wear uh, that hat with that we talked about. <laughs> mm -hmm. it'll, it'll go with that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. It's like the coolest print ever. Although, I have to admit, and Mel like, was like, where did you get that shirt? I was like, uh... I got it from like a D23 exclusive and the fit looks good. Doesn't feel good. And oh, it's no. huge. It's gigantic. Oh, no. It's like. You swimming in it? Look at it. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> this is a large and it's like so much excessive fabric. But oh. I figure like when I get, I'm saving it. It's all good. I figure when I make money, I'll have somebody actually cut it and make a nice shirt out of it. Well, you could tailor that not too hard. And you could take fabric off the sides and tailor it. But that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, when I actually have money and could do those things. So until then, we'll just wear this giant baggy thing here in my kitchen. <laughs> well, um, Bridget's asking me how am I doing. I'm having a great week. I'm getting ready for my epic adventure with my family. And it's it's exhausting if anybody else knows packing for your family and getting ready for a big trip. So mm -hmm. I'm a little tired, but I'm good. So thanks all for asking. And yeah, <laughs> that shirt, the print on that shirt is really fun though. Dude, greatest line ever though comes from Michael. He goes, you know, that, that shirt fits you, Kirk, but there's always room for one more. <laughs> I could fit another person. Look at well this. Well done, Let's... well done. <laughs> Is that Constance? <laughs> you could fit like all. You, you could, you know what? You could, you could probably fit this Kirk in there. You probably. <laughs> I could easily fit a gargoyle in there, hands gargoyle. down. Well, hands up, I guess, but yeah, gargoyle, hands down, I could you could fit Oh, you didn't realize that you were in my kitchen? It was it the spices, or you know, maybe you need some spooky. Pa Look, these are haunted mansion wallpaper panko. People on my side are realizing for the first time that uh, I am in literally the kitchen. Uh, you're in the kitchen and I'm in the closet. So it's like, I have a closet that like has like, this is, it can show you. It's like my storage closet for my, all my craft mm -hmm. things. There's literally a sewing machine behind the camera. So keeping it real. Oh, I do have yeah. my, that's my silhouette from when I was like two up there from Disneyland. Oh, that's so cute. That's so cute. We're going to be talking a lot about photography today too. I know. So yeah, I was just telling everybody before you got here, I'm, I'm dressed a little bit differently and it's a little bit of a hint because I uncovered all kinds of things that are amazing and you're going to be really excited about. <laughs> so they're not gift shop per se, but they're kind of outside of the mansion, kind of inside. I'll just, we'll get Just call it. me Carlos <laughs> and dunk me in that well of knowledge. I'm ready. <laughs> well, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to hold on to mine for a little bit because i think we should do memento mori first but yeah yeah well yeah. do we want to start at memento mori or did you want to do your tunnel first or is the tunnel a part of the get up the tunnel's part of part of it but not all of it so why don't you do memento mori first but we should probably like start the show first for yeah let's start let's uh, yeah okay yeah. let's do that Hi, my name's Kirk, and welcome to another episode of Distry with Kate, the Disney Cicerone, who is the co-hostess with the mostess, and she loves ghosts. Uh, how you doing tonight, Kate? <laughs> it's accurate. I'm doing so good. It's uh, so great to... I feel like we've done this a lot a lot this week, because we've been recording a lot, so... But it's <laughs> yeah, great. Dude, it's we, like we, extra we did, history. <laughs> we did, like, Friday two episodes, then we did a Sunday, and then here we are again on a Friday. Which, know, uh, by the way, for those that are listening along, we did record things in advance, but you're going to be away for the next two weeks. So for 
folks in YouTube land, which we have, I have caught up. YouTube is now up to date with all the uh, episodes. Just look at Walrus Carp. You'll see all the visual. And then the podcast has always been up to date because Kate is better at this than I am. But where, what, what dates are you, are you away next Friday and the following Friday? Is that correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. Got it. And then I'll be okay. back. I think September, that first week of September, I'll be back. So I'll, I'll be back never. Never. All right. I know. But yeah, no. But we have, so we did pre-record two episodes for you guys. Some of you might have caught them already. Um, they'll go out on the podcast and hopefully the YouTube. <laughs> um, for yeah, what I'm going to do is I'll do, um, I'll do YouTube premieres for those dates. So on the 19th and the 26th, they will be YouTube premieres. But those that are listening, who cares? You're already getting it. You're loving this. <laughs> Yeah, thank and thank you everyone for giving me some grace being away with my family. Um, really, and thank you, Kirk, for being so accommodating re- pre-recording all the things. So made it for a busy week stop, for you too. Stop, <laughs> easy, easy peasy. You just asked me like, "Hey, can you talk a little bit?" <laughs> really? Can I talk a little? <laughs> can bit? Can you talk? I know. That was like when we were on the tour, and I was really like creeped out because you weren't talking at all, and I was like, "I'm so used to you just like constantly talking next to me." Yeah. It's, I have like one of those oral fixation problems, so I just don't ever stop. So, I got that going for me. No, it's because you're on lives all the time and you have to talk on lives because otherwise mm-hmm. it's sad. So, it anyway, is. It is. what shall we talk about Memento Mori, my friend? I would love to. I would love nothing more than to talk about Memento Mori. So, uh, first things first, let's look at it. What is Memento Mori? Great question. Here's the answer it's a gift shop. No, there has to be more than that, right? So the Haunted Mansion is a wonderful, wonderful place. But you need to, you know what's actually so cool about this is that, yes, some rides actually have gift shops that are specific uh, to the attraction. But this has its own building. It has its own backstory. What kind of gift shop has its own backstory? I don't know. Not many. So if you look outside of the Haunted Mansion, we'll look on the right-hand side. Let me show you a picture of it, and then I'll give you, I'll read you. Uh, the description of Memento Mori. So Memento Mori is a building that Madame Leota actually owned. So you may not know that this was actually the home of Madame Leota, where she would store a lot of her findings and things from the occult. Because remember, we're supposed to be kind of in quasi New York area, but the backstory is, is that Madame Leota left Salem because of the Salem witch trials and Kind of had this other place to live and hang. Um, and then it's kind of like weird when you think about it that, uh, you know, her head happens to just show up in a glass ball uh, like no more than 400 feet away. It's a little coincidence, this but, you know. Yeah. Right. Let me let me read the official, official story because, hang on, I have so many tabs open. You'll be like quasi proud of me, but it's also horribly unorganized. So bear with me for a second. Okay. Memento Mori shop. Now this is this is you know I, this is loose because this is not exact strict canon, but it's fun at least. Uh, it was built supposedly in the Hudson River Valley. Uh, <laughs> sorry for those that are listening, you can't see me making a face of like hmm, maybe. Uh, it was built in the late 17th century, and it was the abode of Madame Leota. Shop was established, though, in the 1690s after Madame Leota fled her home in Salem, Massachusetts, due to the notorious witch trials that occurred. The historic witch trials of Salem being an event in which several men and women were put to trial and executed for suspicion of witchcraft. Which, who would have thought that Madame Leota was a giant witch? Maybe it was all the stuff that she had that was super creepy and weird. Um, and... So much about this uh, this shop uh, happens after her death uh, because it continued to be run by shopkeepers of unknown relationship to Madame uh, herself. And in fact, you will notice that there are many instances of Madame Leota within the shop itself. And it's said that Madame Leota may haunt or materialize within the shop still to this day. Dum, dum, dum. So, so yeah. Madame Leota was a witch? What? This just in. Guests think that Madame Leota had some sort of psychic ability and was a witch? But I I like the connection to the Salem witch trials. Because it's like one of those things where, I don't know, it's cute, it's fun. It's all those things. Uh, But I think we got to look now. 
I think we should take a peek at the sign real quick. Because there's there's a lot with the sign, but I just want to start with the sign. There's actually and several I signs, uh, but this is a really nice up-close one, which I couldn't find a lot of really good up-close ones. Yeah, vote away. If you're in here, send in emojis. I love you. Have at it. This is a free-for-all. All right. So um, this is the one that's actually on the fantasy land side. I can show you uh, the one in uh, Liberty Square as well, but I just love the details that they added to this when they refurbed it. So both of these eyes are concave, and concave meaning uh, it's like in cut so that it always constantly looks like the pupil. And this one, they actually put Leota in the, the iris of the pupil, right? So like right there in the center. And it does say relics from regions beyond. But that leads us, Kate, to uh, what in the world is a memento mori? And why? what is that word? What does that even mean? I don't know. Let's look it up. Dude, if you want to talk at all, you can. If not, a, I'll just keep going. I'm going to talk a lot later, so I'm going to let you talk. Well, yeah. I, I do, we do, at some point here, we'll have to say um, how we got the gift shop, but please finish the sign first before we get there. Okay. I'll, you know what I'll do? I'll, um, I'll talk about just like the Latin and some phrases of uh, history uh, from Memento Mori, just like as a concept, and then how other languages and cultures view death and then we won't step into the gift shop yet is that fair that sounds great you're a big fan a big fan i just realized that it's like a giant fan <laughs> buff. <laughs> all right so uh memento mori is a latin phrase and it means remember that you die or that you have to die which you know a lot of times you think like okay uh that's really sad and depressing well, you could view it like that. I don't view it like that. I view it as a wonderful phrase uh, because there is the inevitability of death. And there is beauty in that because we all know that if we only have one go at this, then really this is our opportunity to shine. And really, if you're watching other people have these tremendous, amazing lives and you're just sitting on the sidelines wondering, well, like, what are like the... What's the top five things you want to accomplish in your life or top five things you want to experience or that one dish you've always wanted to eat or that one place you want to go take a photo in front of? Like, we only got one of these and we're not promised tomorrow. So I like the concept of that. To me, it's like more motivating. And the like common, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Seize the day. Um, this is a really creepy skull <laughs> that says... Uh, uh, hang on, let me see. Normally, like this is one of the very first times. This is a 1452 skull with an inscription in Latin saying "Memento Mori." So, uh, you know, what's, can somebody tell me what's Latin for uh, "summer teeth"? Because some are here and some are there. That's for sure. On this dude, <laughs> clearly didn't have. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he must have been a mason too look at that brick you know oh man maybe right. that's someone threw the brick out his teeth i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it's probably, it's probably. something is a story there <laughs> uh i am going to not so scary halloween but not for a while so that's scary because everybody's there having a great time but us uh so i i found a bunch of literary phrases and uh that kind of compendium of how people feel about death. Um, so what are you Victoria laughing? Says he somebody's... Needs, he, Victoria says he needs an orthodontist, Maury. <laughs> <laughs> sure does. <laughs> you know, I don't think that uh, that show with that host, uh, Memento Mori, would have been that interesting to find out who the father was. You know? Not sure. <laughs> Uh, oh, <laughs> Master Gracie, you are not the father. <laughs> man, this Memento Mori is getting really good. It's, it's like juicy gossip over here. <laughs> I'm never going to be able to get that the same now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's no longer um, creepy. <laughs> okay, so this is, this is written in <clears throat> Sanskrit, but also can be found uh, in um, Tibetan tombs. So it says, all that is acquired will be lost. What rises will fall. 
Where there is meeting, there will be separation, and what is born will surely die. And once again, like, I don't mean to be like a bummer, but like, I feel like all these things kind of tell you how people embrace or feel, because like, there is a lot of truth to that, right? I, I, the Buddhists are really into this concept of all life is suffering. This is also negative. All life is suffering, and the cure for your suffering is to remove desire, and your desire is from wanting or needing other things. So if you can remove desire from your life, you achieve nirvana. Um, and if you decide to ascend and be born again, you get born into a different status, which is kind of interesting because you're like, okay, you don't care about status or anything, but yet you're trying to be born again. And then if you have this teachings, there's something hum human about wanting to help others, especially if you're in the privilege too. So I, I don't know. There's like, it's like when you do something nice for people, but you know, you're not expecting anything in return. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, here's one that's kind of interesting. And this is talking about Buddhasadavats. Buddhasadavat is somebody who's attained nirvana here on earth. Somebody who practiced Buddhism. My enemies will not remain, nor will my friends remain. I shall not remain and nothing will remain. So like when you think about like how often you get upset about something, like big things, little things. That's the way I take like memento mori is that like, does any of it really truly matter? Uh, so like, why are we taking ourselves so seriously and why not enjoy the time that we have the best we can? But the most uplifting one comes from uh, an Icelandic uh, tomb that says, <laughs> I like how it says it's the most uplifting. And the first line, you're not thinking to think this is uplifting. Animals die. <laughs> We're starting off good. Animals die, friends die, and thyself too shall die. But the one thing I know that never dies, the tales of the one who died. So I, I think, like, think about legacy. Walt Disney, right? And yeah. legacy. I do think about that. Because, like, you're not going to be able to take your wealth with you. You might be able to transfer some of those things. But to me... Like writing a book or uh, teachings, like even oral uh, history has been taught, uh, passed down, like all those things. And like there's almost a myth about Walt Disney, right? Like who was he? I don't know. Was he like a chain-smoking, popcorn-eating, robe-wearing man who liked to eat, uh, drink OJ with a bunch of construction workers? Probably. But that's one side of him, yes. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's not the side that people think of, right? No. People think of him as this like... Like, um, just, yes, you know the aura of Walt Disney, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just tremendous. I just think about that. Like, what's, what kind of legacy do you want to live? It's always like, uh, what, what do you want on your, <laughs> like the famous pizza company, what do you want on your tombstone? <laughs> I want cheese and pepperoni. And they're like blasting off pistol, pistols selling frozen pizzas. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. That's I dating do, yes. me. But. I, I remember that very clearly, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> No, I, I agree. I think it's a, I love memento mori for that, that reason, the phrase, not because it's like, we need to think about death, but it, it ties back all into the haunted mansion, you know, the whole thing, it reminds you of mortality. And we talked about how, you know, uh, everyone is uh, equal in the afterlife, you know, you can't take it with you when you go. So it's like, you know, you don't need to, it's not riches and treasures and it doesn't really matter what you have. It's like, it's like, in the end, you're all kind of equal with everybody else once you go and the, the very idea of like what you do, um, all you really get to leave behind is your legacy. I love that idea because it really is true. That That's all you got. You know, the people you well, love Red, and what you I got. You I got a couple them. of good. Uh, let's let's geek out a little bit more on okay. some sayings in Latin because okay. we know carpe diem means seize the day. Mm -hmm. um, this one is. Uh, Tempus. Fugit, which means time flies. Time flies which I yeah. think that's kind of interesting, right? Mm -hmm. like, um, where's the other one that I wanted? Oh, and then this concept of, this is like another fancy phrase, mortality salience. It's this a belief in the awareness by individuals that your death is inevitable, so you need to utilize your time wisely, which I, which I like too. There's also another one in here, the fear of aging, which is... Geroscophobia, wait, <laughs> Geroscophobia, 
in a, an abnormal fear of growing older, which I feel like as oh. we get older, you get more cognizant of it. Like when you're young, nobody young who's in their 20s is like, oh, I'm scared I'm going to die. It's always like that like midlife crisis. Um, there is another phrase in Latin, though, that I also want to talk about. Uh, it's YOLO. It means you only live once. So it's not that was I, I'm pretty sure Socrates I, or somebody wrote that. You know. I have a Latin for you. So, uh, Todi acceleratio semper absurda. Um, first of all, I feel like you did a Harry Potter uh, spell on me, <laughs> and uh, I think it's pronounced absurdia. <laughs> no, no, no. Of semper absurda, which is what is on the crest for speeding with toad is always absurd. So semper absurda is like always absurd. So it's yeah. Mr. Which, toad's wild which by the way, what a life to live, man. That guy didn't care. He grabs the uh, <laughs> he the horse not. by the reins. He grabbed the steering oh, by the wheel, and he went after it. You know, Elliot and I just rewatched that the other night, and it was amazing. And I'm like, why don't we have more of this? <laughs> He's just brilliant. And when his eyes start turning different colors, I'm just like, okay. <laughs> it's amazing. I yeah. love it. Yeah, it's, it's so good. Like, <laughs> motor car? <laughs> he gets so excited. You know? He like, gives away his whole house for a motor car. <laughs> right. Like, he does his, he's <laughs> like, wait, you're telling me a bar owner... And a bunch of weasels and rats want my house, and they're gonna give me a car. You got it. Here's the deed, bro. I'm, I'm out. I don't care. Let's like do that's it. all I want. You know. <laughs> yeah, he was carping his DM. He was. <laughs> he's, he, he was seizing his car. <laughs> so yeah. All right, oh, I'm gonna stop so... talking. I've been talking too much. What do you got? <clears throat> So the history of kind of how the store came to be, like that was great kind of backstory for it. Um, but the, the there was planned to be a gift shop at the exit of Haunted Mansion, um, right Are around. We're saying the time world or see, land or both. This is mo this is world. I'm talking okay. about world because we're talking about Memento Mori. So. They were they had planned to put um, you know where those three arch windows are when you exit. That was where they're going to be the entrance to the haunted uh the haunted mansion gift shop and this came about about the time splash mountain started getting ride photos and they put that store which you and i have walked through that's now photography themed at the end of splash mountain um where you could buy your ride photo well they're like this is like hopping on the train let's have everybody get their ride photo at the end and also we'll have put a gift shop so you know where's where's the so, where's the arch that you're talking about the three talking, windows that are in right, like hang the on, exit. Hang on. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull so up a picture so that you can like guide me a little bit more. Well, that'll it's inside the exit, so it's not there. Okay, it's, it's like literally when you're walking in the, out of the ride. It's like <laughs> like after over here. Oh, you're you you're talking ride, about in that know. dark. Are you talking about in the dark hallway. tunnel? In the the hallway. hallway. Oh. Hallway. Oh, this is the tunnel. Are you tunneling me right now? <laughs> no, this, this is, is the a tunnel. different tunnel. Oh we my gosh, tunnel, tunnel talk. There's so many tunnels. <laughs> tunnel talk. Okay. So there's the three arch windows, which I don't I don't have a picture of right now. But <clears throat> so they were going to turn that into a like a wine cellar um, and a kind of a crypt wine cellar feel gift shop. Okay. And the, the idea was they're going to do it after the 2000, like 2003 Haunted Mansion film. They're like, okay, this is great. We got this film coming out. We're going to install this gift shop. But as we know, like the film kind of flopped. And uh, they pretty much just scrapped all of their plans for it. <laughs> so then they looked towards um, Yankee Trader Shop, the Yankee Trader Shop. Now, I have a photo. This is going to be kind of awkward because this book is super heavy. But I have a photo. This is my um, maps, maps of the Disney parks. Here, I'll show you this one. Maps of the Disney Parks book, which is fabulous if you love Disney history, because you can go back and see pretty much all the fun maps and actual park maps that were printed throughout history. Um, but they have, I was looking at where the Yankee Trader Shop was, and I have kind of a blown up one. Pray for me that I don't drop this on myself. Let me see where it is. So this is Liberty Square here, that orange thing. And then this little building here, you can see that there's the entrance from Fantasyland into Liberty Square. And then this is the Yankee Trader Shop. And then okay. Haunted Mansion would have been over here, right? 
So this, it, it was only, there's only one entrance. So what happened was when the, <clears throat> the tangled um, theme happened, suddenly there was two walkways, right? There's two walkways instead of one. And that marooned this shop kind of in this awkward place in between the two walkways, which was just kind of bizarre. So um, right in 2013, they started focusing on more high-end merchandising, so more expensive collector type things. And that mm -hmm. is when um, they decided to put the Haunted Mansion gift shop in. And Memento Mori was always going to be the name of the gift shop, even when it was going to be in that tunnel. So what I didn't say, sorry, I, I skipped that part, was when it, the Yankee Trader shop was there and it was kind of more connected to the Haunted Mansion side, their plans were to, like, actually dig out underneath there and create that would be like the exit would be that was one of the plans was like it would be exit through that shop so it would actually connect the exit of haunted mansion would connect to that shop and so that was one of their plans before that they were just going to put it in that tunnel area and create its own shop there's like a couple different plans that they had but if you think about it right that would have it for perspective here, that would have been where like Punzi's tower is roughly a little bit mm -hmm. closer, but yeah, yeah, that would give you roughly yeah. where it was at. Yeah. So, um, it's a, so they had a lot of plans for gift shop and they all kind of fell through. So it's kind of nice that we finally did get a gift shop, but, and it was always, but it was always planned to be Memento Mori, which I love. And then we did get that. So that's, that's mainly what I have for the outside. Do you want to go inside? I would love nothing more inside. than to go inside a gift shop. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, so I, there's so many different things that are in here. I'm trying to think of like what, you know what? I'm just going to start. Let's start I, at the beginning. Yeah, as I soon have as we, just a couple things too. So uh, whenever you're, but go ahead first. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm just letting you know I have a couple things that we needed. Yeah, no, no, no. It's not like it's not like I'm like buffering for time. I just really don't have like a good context of like when and where Sorry. to talk about things. Okay. But welcome to the haunted gift shop. <laughs> I'm your host, uh, Madame Leota. So a little Shakespearean too. What is she, Hamlet, holding the skull? But here you go, Madame Leota, looking much more youthful and alive. And uh, not that far, you know, you just got to put it here into there. Uh, but this this portrait actually exists in Memento Mori. It's actually one of the cutest things uh, that we have in the shop because I love seeing her in full, lively self, not just disembodied head. Uh, we also get that Victorian era style uh, candelabra, which we know has been utilized many times through the Haunted Mansion. There's also one in the store that looks very much like the... Oh, I have a picture of that. The real version of... I have a um, picture of that. <laughs> when, they, when they did uh, Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. La Belle and the Bed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. La Belle and La Bet, which we know we got our arm sconces from as well. You'll notice on the table, this is the same seance table. We have our spell book, which is crooked up a little bit more in the actual seance room that we're getting with Leo, uh, Leota doing her in incantations. Same crystal ball and tarot cards. So apparently her and Dr. Facilier would have gotten down on some tarot cards too. But what's so cool about this, there's, there's actually two imagineering things that happen here. The first one, I'm actually going to go to YouTube and I'm just going to scroll ahead real quick because it just looks so cool when it's when it's actually working. And of course I couldn't find like a live stream of mine. So then shout out to Attractions Magazine. But if you wait every five minutes, this is uh, backlit with backlight. So, and it's just, it's so cool looking when, uh, when it's all lit up. So you cool. can see the, some of the things that you wouldn't notice on, all right, hang on, start closing out tabs, dude. This will make it easier for you. So if you notice, in this upper right, it's got a hidden image. We do not see any of the Haunted Mansion uh, wallpaper until it's backlit. And then there's also another hidden image over here is a raven. So we get a raven yeah. and we get the Haunted Mansion eyes uh, from the wallpaper, which <laughs> shout out to Ellie 
who showed me a picture of these. Have you ever seen a picture of what they look like? Oh, they're hilarious. Yeah. They're just oh my gosh. It looks like guys. spaghetti monsters. It's just like <laughs> straight up flexible PVC with just like like LED lights. <laughs> they look so convincing because it's so dark yeah. in there. But my goodness, if you took short circuit, like his little eyeball thing off his head and put it on like a little flexible pipe, that's what they look like. It's yeah. so crazy. They're pretty fun. I'll try to see if I can find a picture. I was trying to find, there's such a great um, concept art that I think we've shown before, but I, I can't find it. That is basically a, a table with a ball on it. I want to say it's Wally, uh, Raleigh Crump. Not Wally. Oh, oh here, here we go. Hang on. I, I found the eyes. <laughs> you found the eyes. Oh, good. <laughs> Here's what the eyes look like. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's just like light boxes everywhere <laughs> on tubes. <laughs> So well, like, I gotta make an like... emote out of that for my subscribers. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's so oh ridiculous. Gosh. But they look cool. I gotta they admit, do. when the effect is is uh, hey, you know, effect over, you know, <laughs> what they look like in there. This is one of the ones I was thinking of with the crystal ball with Raleigh Crumb. Mm. Yeah. So, the other know, thing so too that... is. We, what's the bird? What kind of bird do we have on that banner in the middle? It's like a, I don't know if you can see it because it's pretty blurry. It's it's like a cross between like an antelope and a human. It's got legs and horns. Oh, man. It's Demonic. hard to say. <laughs> yeah. It's something. It's something. Multifaceted creature. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that the idea of that, like the table. The table, a very small round table with a with a ball on it. I mean, that's just like carried from very early concepts all the way through. So, mm -hmm. anyway, just looking that up. Yep. Okay. Um. So that's all I have on her portrait. Do you have anything besides the raven? Oh, it's saying it's. Oh, you know what? I don't have it. But your one-eyed cat shows up on this as oh, well. Yeah. So I don't I don't have a picture of it on the bottom. I'll have to get one for you and send it to you. But I'm assuming the black cat shows up like right in this area. Oh, our one-eyed black cat. Yep. So that's great. She shows you guys up don't as well. have anything in your ride for that, so it's great. It has you have it somewhere because we have yeah, a some few sort for of. Disneyland. We have got mm -hmm. the one-eyed cat. Mm -hmm. And the the other thing that happens, which I absolutely love and saw for the very first time. Spoiler alert. I'm going to ruin some magic. Um, yeah. Hit a Mickey. They're asking about my mug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I see Hit a Mickey. <laughs> There's a couple uh, is that there. the carousel? Carousel on that as well. The carousel, it's got the castle. It's got balloon. Nice. It's got never give up. So that's why I have it. Never give up. <laughs> Just keep going. Just keep going like the little engine. Uh, I've never seen this before. I've only seen it once. It was amazing. Cast members were asking questions to Madame Leota as the portrait. So the and behind the portrait, a cast member would knock once or twice. Uh, so yes great. would be once and twice would be no. So I would ask like I wasn't asking any questions at first because I was letting kids do it. And then once everyone was gone, but the CMs were still having fun. I started asking a ton of questions like that were like real geeky, you know, about like Phantom Manor and all this other stuff. It was awesome. It was so cool. <laughs> and the best part was for me was when the cast member who I knew was in the back because he came out so happy and excited. He was like, did anything happen out here? I was like, <laughs> oh, you should have seen it. It you was incredible. It. And he was like, really? Oh, that's fun. It was I so love cute. it when casters yeah. get into their, their role. They're so well, fun. I mean, the funniest fun. part about that is it's literally just like an overstock area back there. So, like, if yeah. you actually go behind that section, it's just more merch and merch. stuff to be able to immediately backstock. Isn't that funny? Mm -hmm. uh, the bas the baseball hat is just mine, and then these are just regular. These are um, Haunted Mansion with the gargoyle ears. I can't wear bow ears i just can't they don't look right on me it doesn't work for me but when i saw this i was like dude favorite pair of ears activate awesome and i got them for 14 bucks 
Can't beat that. It's pretty great. Mm -hmm. Well, I spent a little bit of time researching. Do you remember when we saw this object in Memento Mori when we were there? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to research that. Dude, so I'm not going to lie. I was trying to find uh, information on it. Zero. Zilch. I can't wait for whatever you say right now because I feel like there's a big reveal coming. Well, there's a little reveal. It's a little bit. I know a little bit. So okay. um, it's made by Leeds and Northrop um, from Philadelphia. That I know. And it's, um, I believe it's a type something, maybe a type S test kit, test set. And so it was designed for finding fault locations on telecommunication lines. That's what it's made for. I was like, maybe it's like an EMF detector. Maybe it's an early one. Maybe they used it for that because like, I don't think they designed necessarily way back then, you know, specific things for ghost hunting. I don't know for sure. I'm not a ghost hunting expert, but um, I, I believe it's supposed to allude to trying to communicate with the spirits. Um, and they first manufactured these in 1915. So it's, this one is, um, they didn't have a date specifically on it, but the ones that I saw that were similar were around that time period. So I'm pretty sure this is a real one that they just bought probably on eBay or something. Cause they do that mm -hmm. a lot with their props. So, um, so, I mean, I kind of found out some about it, but it's like, I, that's my very best guess. Is it probably has something to do with ghost hunting, to talking to the spirits, um, I can't imagine another reason why they would have that. Other yeah. Time. So like there's there's so many of those uh, things that like detect frequencies and waves, which, by the way, I saw a horrifying uh, video on TikTok of a guy who was a security guard and he kept on going into it was like basically a church and, a, and above ground mausoleum. So I'm assuming that he's probably in uh, Louisiana or some some location like that where it's above ground or it's just a wealthy, more wealthy area. But man, it was I don't know about any of that, but I'll tell you, it was very convincing that uh, that there was some sort of spirits going on or yeah. something. I'm a sucker a for the spooky. ghost hunter shows. I can't, I can't. Elliot rolls his eyes every time I watch them. But <laughs> I used to love when I was a kid. I would watch. I would watch. Are you afraid of the dark? I yes. would watch Count Docula. I would watch on MTV. They had. I don't think it was called Fear, but maybe it was called Fear, where they would make them do like challenges. It'd be like. There was a man who died in a coffin right here because they buried him alive. Now we're going to bury you alive. And it was like, it would be like get in the coffin. And the dude would like get in a coffin that's in a ditch and close the door for three minutes or something. And then he'd close the, he'd close the coffin and then they'd throw dirt on him. And you're like, bro, this is not cool. No. You can't just be throwing dirt on people. Uh, assuming that they're not going to lose it completely. It's like, kind of like Fear Factor, you know, but it was all about paranormal. <laughs> Jin just say we can talk ghost hunting and spirit communication. I'm sure no, all people... No, don't, don't have him talk about it because he has possessed... He has a possessed doll and he has other possessed dolls in his sights to purchase. I'm sure That's he a would whole know a lot about it, though. <laughs> he knows too much. Too much. Frankly, it's disturbing. I'm glad he's on your side. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, well, anyway, so I did, I did when all my research, like I pulled up other ones that were very similar. Like this is, this is another one that I found that is very similar to that one that was for sale. So it just has a slightly different design. Um, I think this is a later mm. model, but I think that's, that's, that's all it is. So I'm sorry. I don't have more to share about that, but that's as much as I could find. It looks like uh Scientology's like Phaeton meters. Oh, where yeah. you like hold those metal things and all they do is they like they turn like little knobs and they're like <laughs> I, I don't know what any of those knobs do but no. something no they do something um the other things i was looking up all of the books that were in there that i took pictures of and stuff last time i was there because i was trying to figure out if there was a theme to all of the books that they put in there as props and one is uh, Littell's Living Age from 1867, which if you don't know, that's like a selection from magazines, from British and American magazines. And they would just, they do like a compilation of them and then they'd release them as a book. So it's just like, they, yeah. I think they actually came out weekly, but then they do it for like seasonally. Like this is, the one that's in there is from 1867 and it's from January to March. And I'm pretty sure it's an original. It looks real to me that they just purchased that. Um, they also have the history of David Copperfield. 
So I was like, how does this connect? And it's, it's definitely like a story about Victorian life. It's from 1849. So I was like, okay, but maybe the time period, it's just they're going for more time period-esque. Um, they have one that's a Royal Academy of Art from Britain. I couldn't get a date on that one. I researched that. They have the Frog Prince, which I'm still trying to figure out why that one's in there. Why is the Frog Prince in there? <laughs> I haven't figured that one out yet. It's bothering me. It keeps me up at night. So I don't know, because that one's from 1812. So it's not the same kind of time period necessarily. And then um, the Labelle and Labette connection with the clock, because there's a clock next to that candelabra. We've already talked about that in a previous episode. And that was 1740 was when that was written. But there was another edition of it that came out in a book in 1889. So that would be right around that same time period. So I feel like they're just all time period books is what they are. But I can't yeah. get, I don't know the Frog Prince. That one. All the other ones kind of have some relevance, though. You know, David yeah. Copperfield with, like, illusions. And the living you know, age because... is kind of a joke. Right, the living yeah. age with the. I mean, when worry. I when I think about Madame Leota, we still don't know whether or not she was capable. You know, she left from witchcraft, but was she just like a traveling act? Do you know what I mean? To make yeah. her money using illusions, I don't know. It's a tough one to call. You know, I know this: if she was spitting out wet, chewed up uh, newspaper and claiming it's ectoplasm, I'm not giving her a dime. Um, it just, but sorry, there was a delay there in my brain. Um, I, Ginge asked what the device was. We couldn't figure out. It's a Leeds and Northrop is what it says on it. And it says it's, I think it's a, some, a, some kind of test set designed for finding fault locations on telecommunication lines, but it's from Philadelphia and that's all the information I have on it. So feel free to. Let but it know, certainly Ginge looks like it. ghost hunting device. Yeah, it does. So, um, Carrie says, depending on when they dress the shop, it may hold over when working on the Copperfield Restra. Carrie, I feel like you had something good there, and we lost you. We lost half of your, your no. statement. <laughs> well, do you have anything else you want to say about the shop? I do. I'm not. I'm just getting started. All okay. right. We ready to spend some money on a uh, on a once in a lifetime <laughs> spirited picture. Let's do it. All right. So on the right hand side of Memento Mori, if you're entering in from the Liberty Square side of things, uh, you'll notice that it's now like registers and everything. But there was an alcove there for a very long time, and that was a really really cool. Souvenir that you could purchase that was, let me get the, it looked like this. And also they did have those spirit jars like you have for oh, Victor yeah. Geist. They had those spirit jars up here before they actually sold them and changed this into like a spirit jar selling area. But this was a photography area where you could get a spirited photo. Now you might look at this and go, oh, that's kind of, that kind of reminds me of something, and it should. It should remind you of these. And you go, oh, man, I, I know exactly where that is. That's our, um, our door knocker hallway where these are the pop-up ghosts as well as our famous hatbox ghost. But these were famous styles of photos that were done on silver, silver plates, and they were called uh, – hang on. Let me – Daguerreotype. Daguerreotypes. <laughs> Was that one of your tags? I wanted to make sure I pronounced it correctly. <laughs> Daguerreotypes, because it's a French word and I'm terrible. Bonjour, you know? Uh, well done. It was, it was one of the very first publicly available photographic processes, and they developed it in the 1840s and 1850s. So this is like the perfect time period for you to get your photo done. And it was made by this guy, Louis Daguerre. And let me flip around and show Louis off. He's looking good, too. I mean, yeah. you know, I don't know how he got that Photoshop, but clearly, <laughs> you know, he invented it. But there's also a ton of other famous historical ones. This is one of the very first uh, authenticated pictures in 1846 of Abraham Lincoln when he was a congressman. And then for me, this guy's pretty famous in my heart, and this is a daguerreotype as well. Here is author... Lewis Carroll. Oh, yeah. And 
So Lewis Carroll has actually a ton of daguerreotypes, which daguerreotypes weren't cheap because the process itself literally took a, where is my little camera? Took this wooden box and it was, there was a silver plate on the backdrop. And depending on how bright the scene was, would show you how long of an exposure you needed. Now, typically for portraits, it would be no more than a minute and a half, which is important. I'll get to that in a second. But you'll notice that, uh, Lewis Carroll has his hand up here propping his head. And that's because if you had to stand still for that long, that's why sitting was very comfortable. It would get really blurry if you moved. So once again, also important, and we'll get to that in a second. But here in the Haunted Mansion, they actually have an advertisement, Immortalize Your Visit to Thunder Mesa. Now this one's from Disneyland Paris. Uh, with this frightening, unique portrait, extraordin extraordinary spectral camera. It's astounding and egg enigmatic. Uh, apparently, somebody from Thunder Mesa, which is bi their big thunder over there, also has a tie to Phantom Manor because he was the one who originally owned uh, the camera, and they used it in this newspaper called The Mysterious Chronicle, which... I don't know much about it, and I don't want to get into Disneyland Paris yet, so I stopped going down that rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, however, I do want to show off a couple more pictures, but let me pull these up. <clears throat> well, it also reminds me of like the the headless photography of Victorian time. Yeah, like, all, right. All the people that would they would kind of like. It's all about exposure, I think. Like this mm -hmm. guy, this dude's got like, you know, his head on a plate. <laughs> uh, because if you if you only had the exposure on the one section for a certain amount of time, then you could move and Well, this one was done by cutting this particular one. Oh, they one. cut it. Oh, they like, oh. they actually cut the negatives is how they did it like this lady. And you so know this what? was like Listen. a trend in Victorian photography, which is actually where we get in the attic, um, that's where we get all of those like headless portraits was inspired by this trend in Victorian photography, headless photography. I'm not gonna lie, you're talking about a bunch of dead people without their heads and cutting their heads off. That's pretty negative to me. It's over here. Uh, so we're still talking photography here. And so you could go into the gift shop and you could actually get one of these spirited hauntings. So they would take your photo and I actually found from Disney World itself, where is Disney World? They actually show um, that this was the wallpaper before they changed it out. It's now since been changed in this section, but you would go, you get your wallpaper. picture taken, and they had this picture on there as well, so you could see that kind of like spirited look of somebody they would do quite often. Um, but here's just a, I don't, I don't know if this gentleman's actually famous and I'm like missing something here, but that was a regular photo. And they would take your photo and they would turn it into this portrait style, which would be, you know, a uh, daguerreotype. Yeah. But wait, there's more. How much more do you want to go on this? <laughs> oh, my gosh. So this, this daguerreotype and this style of photography, and I'll show you one more. And I love this, like, quasi bats on the walls that they use with uh, floral arrangements. But they're showing how kids and everybody can... Take your pictures like a ghoul or a goblin. Cool. But why is this important? Well, also in Memento Mori, I, uh, this is going to be very negative. So if you're squeamish a little bit, it's nothing too squeamish, but it was very expensive to get your photo taken. So a lot of times family members would get their photos taken with people post-mortem. So you're going to see a bunch of, and this is total Victorian era, considering that people only lived for about 40 years, uh, people would constantly be taking pictures of people um, when they had already passed. Now, this one, though, do not. this is a daguerreotype uh, camera, but you'll notice back here there's a stand holding this guy's head up. This is where the myth of taking tons and tons of photos that aren't people in caskets, because really mainly almost all of them were people in caskets, where they claimed that people were propped up while they were dead using these stands. But these stands were actually used to keep people from moving yeah. because if you moved, it would blur it. So a lot of these photos um, were actually, like this dude was propped up with a stand, but he was very much alive. And But a lot of these ones became very famous 
because they said like all of these kids and everything are not alive. And there there were some that were like that, but the majority were not. Like this this legitimate is somebody in their coffin. So oh, those those Ooh. style ones did exist as well. <laughs> it's it morbid, right? Ooh, but, yeah. Hey, remember we must all die. But here's behind the scenes it's of a gentleman who's very much alive. But he certainly looks dead to me. But he is very much alive. And look, they have him propped up with the stance because if you blurred at all, forget about it. Yeah. Forget it. You ruin the ruin the very expensive photo that you were trying to take because they they cured these uh cameras on um what do you call it on silver plates and yeah, silver ain't very cheap long kids. exposure so it took a very long time and you can do that like today you know you can do a similar effect if you do a very long exposure on your camera and you if you walk around it all it's going to blur right so i mean sometimes night, night photography Sometimes when I was taking piz, uh, pictures of my young kids, I kind of wish I had this thing, you know, just be like, <laughs> all right, can you stop moving for like two seconds? <laughs> those Christmas you know? photos, right? The Christmas cards I mean, ones, those are they, rough. <laughs> they claimed that people had to like wait for an, uh, like half an hour, but most of the time, most of the time, uh, it was about a minute and a half. But yeah. I mean, standing still for a minute and a half is really, really tough. So that's why they would use these support systems and stands. So... But you could also get your spirit type. We lost that, though, um, that portion of the gift shop uh, just recently, within the last uh, year and a half. So it turned into the spirit jars, and then we just had that refurb, so we completely lost that room. But that room actually had a couple of Derek types, and there was actually one that was actually somebody deceased in there. So super spooky. There yeah. was dead people in Disney, and you could go see them. And people they had a lot like, of changing oh, this is portraits. So cool. There yeah. were some changing portraits in there, like they would disappear, like when you mm -hmm. moved and things like that too. Like I don't think they're yeah. still there. They're gone now, right? They anything that's fun is gone. Just kidding. <laughs> no, it's uh, no. Most of those most of those photos are gone because what they've done is they put shelving behind those areas and they they put like expensive merch on them. The yeah, gargoyles are back. If anybody cares, yeah, I saw them back. Yeah, if you. Mine, and I have my unbroken one downstairs, which is actually kind of a funny story because I put it, I didn't want the kids to break it, so I didn't put it in the living room because they throw things and stuff because they're kids. And so I put it in our bedroom, like on the shelf next to my bed. And Elliot was like, is this payback for me having the fiddle on my side of the bed? Because now there's a gargoyle staring at him all the time. No, the payback is when <laughs> Elliot's sleeping and you go, yeah. Elliot's like, what are you doing? Like, Trying to sleep just over here. Just want to stick together. I just love you so much. I love you so much. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, I have a whole bunch of um, tails on my side, but I don't want to move you on too fast for Memento Mori if you got anything else. Do you have anything else? Okay. <laughs> So I, you know, when we, we proposed this episode, you're just like, let's do like the gift shops. And I was like, our gift shop is sad because it's not really, we did, we used to have the gypsy cart that was like outside the museum, which was like the museum of the weird in Disneyland, but I haven't seen that mm -hmm. in a while. So, I mean, we have our pirate shop is actually, or sorry, not our pirate, our um, haunted mansion shop is actually kind of attached to our pirate shop, which is called Pieces of Eight. Um, and it has inside it, in the pirate, there's like half of it is pirates and the other half is haunted mansion. And in the pirate one, it is kind of fun because they've got um, Captain Jack or the monkey Jack. Um, this is what it was inspired by is this chandelier. So that's about all I've got for that gift shop. So I was like, what else can I find here that is, would be interesting, right? There's some other things from Pieces of Eight, but they're all pirate related. So I was like, eh. Um, so I was like, well, let's talk about this. Cause I was like, this is a crypt. We can talk about this crypt. <laughs> and so if anybody hasn't, hasn't been to Disneyland or doesn't know what this is, this is near um, the area of the, uh, around the rivers of America in that esplanade that they built for phantasmic viewing. Um, it says 1764 on it. And this actually, a lot of people are like, oh, this is going to be a secret tunnel. Well, no, this was not going to be a secret tunnel. This was a placeholder kind of like a post-it note, if you will, for an Imagineer's project. And the Imagineer's name was Eddie Soto. So back in the day, 
Disneyland was trying to figure out, the Disney officials are always looking out um, how to make more money by like increasing efficiency, maybe closing old rides that um, they're paying someone to operate that not a lot of people do anything on. And they, one of those places was going to be um, Tom Sawyer Island because it's like they've got these rafts that go across and back and cross and back all day long, right? So they said, well, what if we, Eddie Soto said, what if we put a tunnel underneath uh, the rivers of America so people could go underneath it and walk there themselves and then they don't have to pay for the rafts anymore, right? Efficient and they don't have to pay for the fuel and whatnot to make them go. So he came up with this idea. This is a crypt, an entrance to the tunnel that says Lafitte on it, like Jean Lafitte. So this is his actual concept sketch and this was a 1998 proposal that he made. So you would go into this tunnel um, and you would go underneath and inside it is the cat. It's a, he actually said that this is from the catacombs in Paris was the inspiration. So it was all of Jean Lafitte's, um, like compatriots. Now who was Jean Lafitte? Let me back up a little bit to kind of talk about that. Jean Lafitte was a famous pirate who lived in a hideout that was in Barataria, which was off the coast of New Orleans. So he was... He did help out with Andrew Jackson in the war, uh, Battle of New Orleans. Um, so he did have some good things, but he also was a smuggler and a pirate. So he wasn't all, you know, above reproach. So Eddie Soto got that from the idea for it from this, which anybody who's been on the Pirates of the Caribbean in Disneyland might recognize this sign. It's hanging above where you get into the boats when you load. So this is Lafitte's Landing. And that was his actual inspiration for it. Um, so you go into this tunnel and you would go through the catacombs and then you would go on the other side, there was a buried pirate ship. Looks like this. So there would Dude, be all these places. That would have been so incredible. And so um, there's so much more. So <laughs> this is, uh, then they, I don't know if I even have a picture of it. So they made, we would go into the Fort Wilderness. I don't think I have a picture of Fort Wilderness, but you go to Fort Wilderness and they would have turned that into a pirate ship too. And in it, you they would have a saloon where you would have gotten um, a like pirate grog that was actually had pop rocks in it. And that was inspired after Chinese pirates used to put gunpowder in their grog. And so it was what? supposed to be reminiscent of that. <laughs> Dude, crazy. I feel like we need to make... I think we need to smuggle in some pop rocks and like dump them into a Lafouze brew and start, yeah. <laughs> start our own tradition. Yes. So, um, so we did get in the end, um, this, this whole project didn't make it to fruition. And the person who scrapped it was Paul Presser, who was the Disney's uh, chairman of parks and resorts at the time. He was just like, this is, this is too much. Right. But however, um, we did get the pirates layer on um, Tom Sawyer Island. So our pirate, our Tom Sawyer Island has a whole bunch of pirate themed things. It's got broken down ships. It's got things you can climb in and it's got Dead Man's Grotto, um, which you can go in and see actually one of the, the changing pirates from Pirates of the Caribbean. He's like chained up um, and he actually changes back and forth. So that's still there. Um, but the Lafitte story goes so much deeper. <laughs> this is just the tip of the iceberg for Lafitte. And this has been like this overall arching theme of like, does Lafitte touch all the attractions in New Orleans Square? So we've got Lafitte and Pirates, right? We've, we saw that sign. Um, and <laughs> there's another thing that is iconic in Disneyland, which I, I don't know if you ever noticed this when you were there. This is this has been around for a very long time. And this is an anchor that is Lafitte's anchor. I remember you showing that and I feel like you've also shown me something that's attached to a tree. Is this, the, is this, this similar? This is a different anchor. There's okay, different anchors. anchor. Different anchor. <laughs> so this one has actually been around. Like, this is from 1950s. This is, I think, from opening day. So it was there. It's been there forever. They keep refreshing it. And on it, on the plaque, it says, Lafitte's anchor said to be from a pirate ship commanded by Jean Lafitte in the Battle of New Orleans. Um... It is also said that Lafitte's privateering ships left a wake of blood from the mainland to Barataria, uh, Barataria Bay, 
but don't believe everything you read is what the plaque says. And mm. it's always said that from like, and it has the date, January 8th, 1815. So this has been there. I mean, there's even in this picture, this one's super old. It's kind of in the corner there. It's been around oh, yeah, for a yeah. very, very long time, and it's still so now. So that's, that's when you're looking towards what, like the Cafe Orleans kind of area? Yeah, I think this was before we had Cafe Orleans okay. because that, cause that New Orleans Square Those was the built later. the only later. buildings that kind of look similar. Okay, so let me make sure I'm not missing anything because there's so much more. So in the Haunted Mansion movie, there is... They created a backstory for it for Gracie Manor. The Buena Vista Pictures backstory was um, that the builder of Gracie Manor had a secret association with Jean Lafitte. Okay. And they, the Gracies used his tunnels, his smugglers tunnels to hide in. So <laughs> there's also this connection with Andrew Jackson because of the um, Battle of New Orleans. So in Fort Wilderness... You're going to like this. So this is what our scene look, used to look like in Fort Wilderness, okay? We got, like, the, they're, they're, they're chilling. Well, they put those props, they took those props, and they put them somewhere very specific. Oh, my gosh. Let me find the photo. Hold on. Wait for it. Wait for it. Okay. So there's his coat down there. That's so cool. Of course, that was with the beating heart bride. Um in the attic and then they're still around like his chair this one's from more from constance wow his boots his um his sword all i i think a lot of those pieces are still there they're just kind of in the dark so we can't see them so those pieces Ooh. from that scene with andrew jackson are in the attic um and I feel like there's 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 a couple more. Hold on, hold on. And this isn't even what I was excited to show you, by the way. This is just bonus. This is just like fun, fun extras. <laughs> this is fun. Um, there was okay. There once was the ship that sailed to sea. No, this the uh, Le, Lafitte's silver shop was a thing in New Orleans Square once upon a time. And. Yeah, I know. I've heard offhand Disney has some some stuff on this, but I actually read actual just interviews with Eddie Soto. That's where all this comes from. And then um, there's there's one more. Let me make sure. The props in the attic. Oh, oh, oh! I know. Sorry, I'm now now I'm talking a lot. We had your turn. Now it's mine. <laughs> there is. Where is it? There's a very specific photo. There used to be. I've lost it. No. So there used to be this pirate show that happened down on um, the area around the rivers of America. And it had a smuggler's theme to it as well. And I'm starting to think that I don't have the photo, which is such a bummer. Oh, I don't think I have it. So, and it had, in front of it, it had June... It had the portrait of June from April to December, the June one. So there's the connection there for that smuggler show. They connected back to the Haunted Mansion as well. So there's just like this overarching theme of um, Haunted Mansion slash Lafitte slash Pirates just kind of going on, right? Which I know you love because you love the idea of the Haunted Mansion kind of started with a pirate, right? <laughs> so... I've got, here's the thing. Are you ready? <laughs> are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? No. <laughs> Reveal it. I found from 1957, my friend, the Ken Anderson walkthrough pirate edition of the Haunted Mansion sketch. What? So they were supposed to be, this is... All of this was pirates themed and like the straight up the whole storyline. The whole it's there. storyline. This is it's Pris a Bayou the Priscilla ghost ship. and Captain Gore. This is it. This is Ken Anderson's nineteen fifty seven walkthrough. So and I I can walk you through it real quick, a little like closer up, but 
So they've got, it starts here, the girl. Was, was this from Boundless or from something else? This one, I found this in uh, Long Forgotten. This is the Long Forgotten Haunted Mansion blog, which is brilliant. If any, I highly recommend it to anybody who's fascinated with the mansion. But this one just blew it out of the water. So it starts with, um, I love how, um, let me let me see. So it starts with a girl up here. So not only do we have that sketch, but I have the original storyboard sketches for it too, for each scene. <laughs> oh, dude. So there's that's dirty. So this is the girl in the window, which is the first part that we walk through. So this is the storyboard of Ken Anderson. So the girl in the window, and you can see the arm pulling her back in. No, 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 Carlos, <laughs> don't grab me by the neck. Mm-hmm. Well, and. I'll say this as we go through this, that you have to remember that they were working on Pirates and Haunted Mansion at the same time. There's so many yeah, ways. Yeah, so why not, these, why not utilize certain things? They are, they are completely intertwined in a lot of ways. And so you'd start and then it goes, the girl in the second floor window is the first oh, part. Oh, I am so in love with this. I found, I found the web page, the oh, specific one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so good. So this is like the uh, example of what the staircase might have looked like. This is like later concept art, but this just kind of giving you an idea of like what this could look like. Um, and then you'd go to the portrait room, which of course has Priscilla and Captain Gore in it. And then um, you'd move out of the room through a hinged bookcase, which we have in this concept art here, which I love. <laughs> Yeah, we're Hinges Creek, right? You actually have to pull Treasure Island for that SEA room. Yeah, yeah. And then the, then, oh, the Pirate at the Table. I don't think I have an actual photo of that. They don't have concept art for that, but there's there's a pirate sitting It shows hands coming out, too, from the mm -hmm. wall. Let me see if I can, if I'm, I'm going to. Mm. And there's a face at the window, too. You can kind of see it. Which, it's pirate at the table in the middle there. And there's a face at the window and there's hands coming out. So we had, this is like the girl down here, the portrait room. We move through here to the bookcase, through the to the pirate at the table. Then we're going to go with the wife at the chest up here. So That's when she finds the treasure. Mm -hmm. And I have the Not storyboard good. here. This is a storyboard sketch for when she finds the treasure. He's rich? How did he find that? <laughs> Where she finds out, remember, if you remember the tale, she finds out he's a pirate. And he didn't like that he found out, she found out that secret. Bad news bears for her. So, Why would you go in my chest that's just sitting in a <laughs> random room in this house that is clearly there and heavy to move? Uh, and then um, I love, and then it goes to the wife in the chest. Oh, it goes to this bayou ghost like um he's called, he calls a cyclorama but like this room with the bayou and the ghost ship so it's like a window that they look out and they see this ghost you, ship out there what do you think like that the the little drawings and etchings are supposed to be do you know what i mean because like there was purpose with those random shapes i feel like it's supposed to be like maybe trees like spooky trees and like mm. hanging moss and things like that um i like this this concept art here I, I like the way he combined this that i think that's very these are two different pieces of concept art but kind of like the idea of the ghost ship and you know the one that we get in florida and the pirates of the on the Caribbean. right hand side is mm -hmm. very reminiscent on the bottom mm -hmm. so there's that and then you go around let's see what's next um the wife of the chest the pirate in bed so the pirate in bed we see here and i love this because it's so much like that's where we get our headless uh, knight, remember, of the Haunted Mansion. Mm -hmm. But we also get the footsteps, which is great, you know, because we have that now on the Endless Staircase, this idea of, like, um, invisible ghost footprints. And mm -hmm. this is, this. so this concept is, like, all of the his people, maybe he's double-crossed in the past, are haunting him. But in the storyboard itself, it and was There's your more... pirate's layer too, with the uh, pirate chained up. Yes. And then there's this. So this is more the storyboard. This is Priscilla herself haunting him and bothering him while he's in bed. Um, here's him 
having a snooze, hanging out with his with his pistols. <laughs> with his pistols. <laughs> and then there's, and then he gets startled. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Reminds me of that Rhonda Ooh. gift she always gives us with the hat. And the <laughs> oh gosh. Um, and then, then he's obviously tortured. Um, where's the next room? I lost it. We're, um, well, did, does it show the ghost of the wife or no? I don't think I have any concept art that I've seen from it. Then there's hanging, hanging pirate above is the, because I, I think that the ghost of the wife is just the footprints and then hanging pirate above is the next one, which is, well, don't obviously... you, don't you think the, um, that graveyard through the window is if you look at the way that they frame that it's almost uh they're using forced perspective on that too to give you a view of like the portrayal of okay foreshadowing there's going to be death coming up yeah absolutely and i think we get that a lot in the mansion now like you think of the music room when we see mm -hmm. um you know the the branches that were collected off of disney property in the window behind the piano and whatnot we still we get that basic concept of like we're looking out over kind of the spooky trees and get impending doom um and this is of course the hanging the hanging scene which if in the octagonal room looks a lot like the stretching room right but this is the concept art for ken anderson for this particular pirate walkthrough that was the original happened. swinging wake the original swinging wake <laughs> Which then Terrible. later kind of became this, right? We have people walking through. It's the same concept, but different art. Carrie is saying there's a photo of her in a wall with rain on her. I'm gonna, I'm gonna scour. Okay. Um, I do have also some of the other pirates that were supposed to, like this is other concept art for those pirates who are haunting him. Same, same deal. There's the guy with who's chained up, um, who is in that pirate slayer for John Lafitte right? <laughs> Later became Dead Man's Grotto, but still there. Um, oh, oh, here we there's... go. Here we go. I got the wife at the end of the hallway. I don't think this is the one with rain necessarily, but here's a... Oh. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And she's definitely down. That is... You know how horrifying that would be if you're like walking around this place and you just see that? Yeah. Well, the idea is she's like haunting him, haunting him and tormenting him. Yeah, well, I've passes out. Oh, I found this picture. I this one. This is probably what you're talking about. So this is that's the guy I'm talking about who's in Dead Man's Grotto, and that's mm -hmm. the concept art it cut. It came from. So I love that they pulled that from that even in the '90s. You know. Yeah, and then so... even even this one for another pirate, the guy with the seagull, and then this dude. Yeah, isn't that great? So it's mm -hmm. like it's like the lines were very blurred. Um, there's also very... the, there was notes too that it was possibly like a wax museum as well. It was archived between some ones that were next to like wax museum ones for um, Pirates of the Caribbean. So, um, and I love this one as well for the outside courtyard fountain and girl in second window. This was some other concept art. You can kind of see like there's this octagonal one, and it's the same kind of shape of the building mm -hmm. very very similar concept so um yeah that's just i just got so excited when i found that i was like oh i have to show kirk there's also, so many cool i was just, just like comparisons you know yeah and it's um that original storyboard is amazing but it just really does show how much those attractions were you know, you got the same people working on the same kind of things. They're just like, do we put pirates here? Do we put ghosts here? Do we put ghost pirates? Do we <laughs> like you're working on pirates and haunted mansion at the same time? You know, they 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 it was only two years later that haunted mansion came out after pirates. So I imagine they used a lot of these pirate things. They just shifted to pirates of the Caribbean while they were still trying to decide what to do with haunted mansion. Well, and that's I feel like there's there's there. there's a ton of camaraderie, right? amongst uh imagineers and in the projects there's a lot of times where like especially if they liked an effect and it didn't get placed in an attraction or get the okay it resurfaces that happens yeah. quite a bit yeah 
they repurpose Because why, why do the extra work when you're like, dude, this, this, this can work, but maybe we just didn't apply it in our storytelling. Yeah. And I think they did a lot of repurposing for other things. And I found in a comment that Eddie Soto made, he actually has a website that you can go and see some of this concept art on. He talks a little bit more about the, the tunnel, the Lafitte concept. Um, but he made this, this comment and he said he heard from an, a retired Imagineer before him who had worked on Mansion and other shows during the Golden Age. And he told me something pretty interesting about Mark Davis. He was telling me that as a part of his process, Mark would occasionally redesign his figures as the staging in the scene evolved. So once the sets were designed and the space became more defined, he would do a new piece of art to reflect the revised staging. He would work directly in ink and do these the same day. So like perhaps this is one reason his art ends up looking like the final show that we see. And so that I just thought that was fascinating because that's we know how we see so much of Mark Davis's art. It's like this and this and this and this and this. Well, that's because he's like watching it in real time, how the thing is coming together and he's re-sketching it and redesigning it to fit the scene, which I just think is fascinating as a designer. I love that. Yeah. There's, uh, I, I mean, just, I can't say it better than you. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually gotta... one with words, but not tonight. Uh, Carrie was talking about, there's also some Raleigh Crump footage of him talking about certain scenes that could have happened but never happened. There's a lot of footage to go through, though. I'll have to watch it. Yeah, there's there's all kinds of stuff out there of, like, things that Disney, never got built in Disney. Lots of, lots of information. Just um, If it came from Imagineer, it's a golden source. Um, but if it's from anywhere else, make sure you double-check your sources. There's a lot of misinformation out there. No, it's Raleigh Crump talking, and as long as it's not dubbed over, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll be good. Yeah, I'll listen no, to him. Raleigh, although I have heard Raleigh Crump is known to, um, not 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 tell the truth, embellish, kind of like embellish, yes, embellish things a bit because he's a storyteller at heart. He's a story, he's, yeah, he's a storyteller, and he's a creative. Yeah, which is fun, but it's just like, I think it's funny. <laughs> so anyway, I thought you would love that because I'm like. I, and then I started digging in a hole where there actually was going to be a water ride at one point in the Haunted Mansion. And Walt said, no, I, we already have too many boat rides. But this was before they even did Pirates or Small World. So <laughs> I'm not sure why he said that. Well, you that. know what? In my theme park, I feel like we need a haunted pirate ride. Haunted pirate ride. We need to make ride. it happen. Mm -hmm. And it's a boat. We go on a boat. I loved it as a kid. They had in um, Wildwood, New Jersey... Dracula's Castle, and I this is this is it, terrible in terms of capacity. The upstairs of the castle walk through the dungeon boat ride, both yeah. two different haunted houses. What if you had like a a roller coaster that converted to a boat ride halfway through? Why not? They can do that with rise. I mean, imagine what they did there. This got to be. I've possible. never. I've never been on Gringotts, but I know Gringotts has some pretty unique elements. And I remember um, I've, I've seen, like, certain ride elements get kind of mixed together. That's, like, to me, the mummy is this crazy mixture of dark ride, storytelling, with coaster, but also kind of, like, parts of almost like Dinosaur slash Indiana Jones. It really is unique. It's like one of the few attractions that's just so uniquely its own. It's it's not it's not common. Yeah, I I don't know. I haven't been on the Green Gods one. Like I I want to go on it. Yeah, I've I have no idea what it would be like. I was trying to find this photo. I can't find it. Oh, someday someday I'll find it. I'm still in the haunted mansion attic on here. Well, oh, oh, maybe I got it. Nope. Yep. Maybe. Just kidding. Here, I found it. Okay. So this is the pirate one that I was talking about that has the portrait of um, April to December. Oh, I love that. But this was just like a prop set that they used for a show that they did for a little while. Just tying it back to the haunted Upcycling. mansion. Upcycling. 
I'm the only way yes. they know how. <laughs> oh my goodness. I I feel like I rushed through all of that, so I'm sorry. I was just really excited. But <laughs> I don't think so. I think well, I mean, you totally told a story about the Haunted Mansion and Pirates, but it came it stemmed from Lafitte and that tunnel. Yeah. Which I was Googling Haunted Mansion and Raleigh Crump and uh and that tunnel, the forgotten tunnel came up and it was Adam the Woo. I'm like, okay. I can well, listen the, to that maybe. Yeah, the a lot of people will say that it's the crypt that has the oh, I didn't tell you about the date. So the the crypt that has 1764 over it, the reason it says 764 is that it's because um the son of Sam McKim, who is like legendary um, animator and map maker of Disneyland that made the original maps for Disneyland. His son, um, Matt McKim, who was also Imagineer, it's his birthday. He just subtracted 200 years. So that's what it's, that's the date on it. And that, but a lot of people will think that that is the actual tunnel. That was going to be the tunnel there. But that, like I said, was just a, like Ed, Eddie Soto says, it's just as like note to self, like, this is more, I want to make more of this project as they like put all the re- renovated that area for Fantasmic. Um, but then it just, it just didn't get approved. So, and um, they actually, I saw that they asked him, well, wasn't it the anchor that inspired you? Cause that anchor has been around there since opening day and it's Lafitte. And he's like, actually I'd forgotten about the anchor. It was the sign in the Pirates of the Caribbean that says Lafitte's landing that inspired it. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So no, so no, it wasn't. <laughs> so no, anchor it was just an anchor. The poor anchor. I know. I feel Nothing. like everybody forgets about it. I had to like wait till a little kid stopped climbing on it to take a photo of it last time I was there. <laughs> Same like bar for the yeah. course. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <sighs> there's there's a lot of times where that happens. You know, things yeah. get unintendedly used. Uh, there were kids sitting on top of uh, Mater. At Art of Animation when I was there, I don't know, a couple months ago. They were on top of them. Like, on t- I'm like, first of all, you're climbing on top of this car. You're at least 15 feet up in the air. What are we doing here? And where yeah. is an adult? I'm like, this is how we get fences, kids. Yeah. Well, that happens a lot in Radiator Springs. There's, like, a whole bunch of rocks that are near the ride where all the cars are going by. And I all the time mm-hmm. I see people standing on top of them, like, climbing all over them. And I was like, what's happening here? Like. Yeah. <laughs> it happens This so is not the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids playground, even though it looks like a playground. Memories. Mm-hmm. Sad. I never actually... I have a picture on. of my dad and I, and I was riding Auntie. Mm-hmm. And my dad is wearing Umbro red shorts that were <laughs> super short <laughs> with giant tube socks with red lines on them. Nice. Super bright white, like... All the Classic. way up his shins. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Classic. Huge mustache. <laughs> I love it. That's mm-hmm. so great. Yeah, that's things are long gone, but not forgotten. I'm glad that we didn't lose uh, Tom Sawyer Island because it sounds like they said that during that time period is also when they were like shutting down People Mover and they shut, they got rid of Skyway and they got you know it's like they were they were looking for ways to save money on things that took a lot of manpower and or you know like maintenance um i know in disney world that's how we lost 20,000 leagues under the sea cuz it was just maintenance 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 and it's a little shocking that we haven't lost autopia or tomorrowland speedway yet because those cars need so much maintenance <laughs> but i think their day will come and get renovated but yeah I imagine that's like ripe for completely changing that whole you know what i I think everybody's just excited for d twenty three too you know like this will be the year where we can actually just not talk about like what's reopening. We can actually yeah. talk about like new projects where last couple of years I basically it was like this may happen, yeah, but probably not yeah, I mean, like maybe we're not doing this anymore, but we won't talk about it that we're not doing it. Yeah, and I'm sad. Everybody's like, are you going to be a D23? And I was like, I can't. I have family obligations. And I'm going to Disney World like the next week. So I'm like, it's just not. It's a rough life. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I was like, how is that? You know, I'm on vacation here. I'm on vacation. I got to go 
from one vacation to it's a work trip. Mm -hmm. I know. It's just such a hard thing. No, it's like my, my husband's got a conference at the same time. And I was like, I would love to go to D23, 100%. Maybe next year. We'll see. But, yeah, you know, it's not family. going anywhere. Family. Family's important. I am an honorary member of D23 through my buddy. My buddy got... Um, he got gifted a subscription and it came with like a buddy companion one. So if there are any events like Tron opens up or something like that, you know, ever, then I could probably try to sneak my way in. That'd be nice. And I think that also means that I get to live, like see the streams, I guess, of what's going on. Cause I can't be there, yeah. but I'm part of D23. I think that's how it works. Maybe I'm lying. Nice. Maybe I don't get to see anything and I have to yeah. watch it on TikTok. Nothing. <laughs> Shocker. Right now, tonight, the big thing that's happening is uh, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party is basically getting rained out. Oh, that's so, that's such a bummer. For all I don't know what they do in that instance. If you are there and it's raining horribly, like they don't give you a secondary ticket. They're just like inclement weather. It is what it is, which stinks so much, especially if you wanted to see fireworks, stage show. Um, or if you there's like a lot of things a nice, that are indoors. If you had a nice costume oh. too that you like worked on really hard, and it's like raining, what the heck? Yeah, you can't really. Wear yeah, it. that stinks. Yeah. The um, I'm super super stoked because the they never said what rides we're gonna get. They said some rides were gonna get overlays. We knew Space Mountain was gonna get an overlay. We knew that Mad Tea Party was gonna get an overlay. Um, there was one other one I can't remember, but it was like okay. Pirates has an overlay, what? which I'll have to, I'm sure TikTok will be flooded with it. Sure. Um, but that one time where they did live cast members um, in the attraction itself, like performing. Boom. Well, did you boom. see that in Haunted Mansion? Like when they had live, they made live um, Pepper's Ghost actors. Yeah, yeah. They did that on the little berm that's right there. Um and it was awesome. Like, no, I was there no, no. live for it. it was... Inside the ballroom. They actually what? made them Pepper's ghost. Like, they what? illuminated. Yeah, like, they were, like, illuminated them. They're, they're like, underneath you when you're going in your doom buggy. And they they were, had, they were like, at the table and stuff. Like, I was, like. It's, what? Yeah. I don't, if I find it, I'll send it to you. It was crazy. It's So, they just put them, though, where the animatronics would be. Like, mm -hmm. where there was empty seats or, like, added seats. And then yeah. you just got, like, like. between the seats. <laughs> yeah. And you're, like. Yeah, it was that's crazy. So, it was for the. It's not that uh, hard to do either. It was for its birthday, I think, on the ninth. Oh, so that's I, so I only cool. saw like one or two TikToks about it. I was like, "What?" <laughs> so, that was pretty. That's neat. sick. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I feel like that's it. I know. That's all we I got. Like, I and feel it's... like we've reached like. I know we still have a couple of haunted mansion things to do, but I feel like we have reached the end of an epic journey together. <laughs> The Haunted Mansion. Yeah. I, I mean, what month did we start this in? Literally, what month did we start the Haunted Mansion and stop? They, we just couldn't stop. I don't know. We're, this is episode 16, I think. <laughs> 16 episodes of the Haunted Mansion. Oh, my goodness. The end of the Oh, well, my goodness. I mean, we still, uh, at some point here, we still got to do, you know, the international ones. We still need to do the Haunted, like, the overlay for nightmare before christmas so um haunted mansion holiday we still have a couple like pockets of things but you and i'll have mm -hmm. to chat like if we want to save those as kind of like bonus episodes here and there or what but i feel like this is like wrapped up pretty well you think this is it <laughs> this feels like i know but i think there's oh i think we could always come back to like bonus episodes because we're always learning new yeah. haunted mansion things well so. you know what maybe i i think the holiday one we should really wait for like closer towards christmas yeah i feel like doing the holiday overlay is is fair game to hold off a little bit yeah and the if i think if we were going to do one more thing but i, I kind of feel like we should devote like a whole episode to each one of the foreign ones. Yeah. Yeah. You I know, agree. And I almost feel like we should spread them out because those, you know, I haven't been on Paris since 2006. And so I'm going to need a little refresher for, you know, going yeah. on the ride. And they'll take a little bit more research just because we're not there all the time. I, so That is a great question. So the next two things that some people saw, some people may have missed, but the next two weeks are going to be 
uh, color theory and sight lines. Uh, and then where do we want to go? I don't know. Uh, Joanne was asking what's the next ride. I think we should have a very lively conversation in Discord under the Distry tab and see what people want to talk about. I I kind of feel my opinion was let's do a couple of like small ones mm -hmm. so that we're not doing like these crazy diatribes all the time. Because like if we started Big Thunder or Pirates again or whatever. Yeah, that's uh, another 16. Do you have six more journey. months of your life, right? <laughs> so uh, my suggestion would be some smaller stuff, some more yeah. palatable, digestible, smaller. But we were just so excited about this to geek out on the Haunted Mansion that we like couldn't help ourselves, you know. We did and I learned pirates, so though. much. I learned so much from doing this with you. Not only Me too. from, I mean, I learned more from you than my own research, but it still was a great opportunity to, I, I, there's very few people that know more about the Haunted Mansion than you or I, and that's really unique and weird and fun. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was been a journey, and now everybody, you know, can go back and watch and listen, you know, if they missed an episode or if they just want to relive it. <laughs> I know Ginger was sad that we're ending it, like, you can go back and listen to them all again if you're sad, but yeah. Um, Victoria says, just pick a square foot of the park and it should last one episode. <laughs> that we is could probably true. do It'd that. Be like, it's, well, because we could just spin around and see everything that you're looking at. What do you smell? What do you hear? What are you physically standing on? What? Can... Oh, God. It's always fun on live streams when somebody's pointed at a wall or the floor, and I guess the best I can with where we are it, within like the first second of opening up the live stream. It's like a fun contest I play with myself so to try to figure out where we are when I was kind of thinking it um when I'm in Disneyland this month I I'm fairly sure that Elliot will go back for a break with the kids and I don't know if you're interested in doing a dual live stream for an hour or so when you're in the parks already so we could do that again that was really fun last time with Main Street yeah that was insane it was so cool doing side by sides and Main Street was so much fun like yeah. who who has that much fun in Main Street? Yeah, Us. We totally get, and we never we didn't really we, get out of Main Street much. We no Main no Street. no no we did we did we a did Fantasyland bit. on. Didn't we do a did we do a Rad T or something? We did something that was combined. Oh, that's right. It was Rad T. Remember we did yeah because you showed. I think we did big. Did we do Big Thunder and Splash Frontier or was it all Fantasyland? I know I we didn't think we do Tomorrowland. We did a haunt, we did haunted mansion, which didn't really work for me. <laughs> Wi-Fi is terrible over there. Um, we could do more of Fantasyland, though. I bet we could do some Fantasyland stuff. Yeah. Small world and all that. That would be fun. That would be very mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. Well, when uh, basically the name of that episode, I'll just title it right now: Why Disneyland is infinitely better in their Fantasyland <laughs> than Disney World. Kate will take the whole episode. Because it's dark rides are my favorite and all of that. And real men ride caterpillars. I need to make that shirt. That's that's a that is a shirt. It'll be my first like Disneyland ish only. Oh, thanks, Bridget. She says, "Hope I hope I have a wonderful vacation." I appreciate that. I I'm really looking forward to all of it. I'm uh, excited to see the inspiration for Big Thunder Mountain, which was you know it was Monument Valley, but also Bryce Canyon. So I get to go see that. So that's exciting, and then I get to actually go there. I'm sad that Haunted Mansion's going to be closed when I'm in Disney because they're doing their overlay and the Matterhorn's down, and I'm just <laughs> bummed because I don't think my two of my kids haven't been on it ever. So really sad about that. But it's not going anywhere, though. I know. Go back. I know. It's not like they're shipping it over to Switzerland and Epcot or something, you know. Mm. <laughs> I mean, if they want. <laughs> we could use another coaster. <laughs> no, yeah. Not just Fantasyland, Victoria. You want to see other things, too. I don't know. We, we could, we'll talk about it. We'll figure out if, it, if it's possible what we can do. Yeah. So. All right. Well, uh. What do we what do we even say? I know. You know? I feel like we should have something ceremonious about the Haunted Mansion I, at least ending. I know, I'm a little, little teary. I'm like <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like, sad. Like we're not gonna it's be sad. Again. We've been this is like <laughs> we started out like Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was all concept and now it's 
Hey, listen, you know what? I have, I like all good series, Memento Mori. Memento Mori. Hurry back. <laughs> Hurry back. Yeah. Be sure to bring your death certificate. So sad. <laughs> sad. The series is done. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, we'll figure it out where we're going next. But we got two weeks um, while you're away. And yeah, we'll try to link up for Disneyland. So enjoy your trip. I'm sure I'll talk Thank to you, you later, but appreciate yeah, and it. We'll, and I'll be doing some live streaming from the Walt Disney Family Museum, which I think is the 27th. It's a Saturday. That's going to be exciting. Mm-hmm. So I made sure that I'm A-OK to film there, and they're they're good with it. They were more than good with it. They're really happy that I was coming, so... They're tucked away there well, in San Francisco, so they need love. <laughs> oh, who uh, who asked us about live streaming? The, the Disney sister. <laughs> the Disney sister, bro. <laughs> no. Okay. No, no. All right, no. everybody chill. She's coming to the museum. <laughs> dust, yeah, dust, dust off the I don't artifacts. Think it was that. Please. <laughs> no, they were just really sweet and accommodating and happy, and I'm really excited to to get to go and see all the Walt things and share them with you guys. So look out for that. It'll be great. Mm-hmm. I might make it a little event on TikTok to so everybody can sign up for that. Yeah, but, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's super, wanna... super special too. This is like the thing where like you don't want to hang up because they see you hang up and you're sad because it's like haunted mansion stuff. <laughs> I feel like this is like <laughs> <laughs> Well it's a it's all good. Listen, don't it's not the end. Because we'll end. uncover other things and we yes. come back for like little bonus ones and we'll do, um, we'll have a great time with whatever we end up doing with Haunted Mansion. But I have to have my, my bow on for the end. For the end. Say <laughs> love V. R.I.P. You know? Haunted Mansion. Yeah. R.I.P. Yeah. yeah. It's true. It's yeah, okay. Memento Mori. I think Memento Mori is okay. it's a good, it's fitting. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, they, thank you, then. everyone, for um, joining us on this epic Haunted Mansion journey. And this is not the end. We have lots more amazing distillery to come up. With, and please join us on um, our Discord so we can chat with you guys about what you want to hear. Because we would love to do things that you want to hear about. So, yeah. um, Other than that, any final words, Kirk? There's always room for one more. <laughs> Any volunteers? <laughs> was room for a thousand. <laughs> Especially yeah. like your shirt. <laughs> so you wore the right shirt for that. But there's like, there's literally eyes everywhere. <laughs> oh, gosh. I love Gonzo, too. Gonzo's my favorite Muppet. So when he was portrayed basically as the main protagonist, I was ecstatic. Yeah. And Pepe's the new Rizzo. I have to deal with it. I'm not happy like, about it, I but like I'll, I'm okay. I know. We're so I, I, I agree. Dude, Muppets Christmas Carol is, it's a classic. Yeah. And their two banter back and forth is priceless. So good. I'll have okay. to go look for, for some more chickens somewhere to <laughs> pep us up and see. Dude, there's an alarming amount of chickens in Pirates, too. Like an yeah. alarming and amount. And they're all identical. It, they're... <laughs> that chicken looks like that chicken. She looks like that chicken. They all look alike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, I was like, holy cow, there's like seven more in this scene. So like the auction scene has like 24. And then right next to it, uh, where people are chasing each other, uh, there's like another seven. <laughs> like there's like. A lot of chickens here. I, I look for rocks and you look for chickens, so we're very exciting people. <laughs> I'll look for other things in the future. You know, what obscure thing? You know what? I'm not going to lie, though. No joke. That experience of, forget the chicken sandwich part. That was just fun. But the looking for chickens made us look at the rides in a completely different way. And I know that's silly and weird, but even in Pirates' dialogue, they're, quit your clucking. Don't be chicken, Carlos. Like mm-hmm. it's all over the place. Chickens like, are everywhere. Until you, you, it's right. It's like uh, don't think of a pink elephant, and pink elephants just suddenly are everywhere. You know? <laughs> I like that reference. Well, and it's like so. living with the land has a whole bunch of chickens too. They got like all clucking around the house. 
Yeah, there's seven there. And then uh, we made the decision when you get to the video sequence montage screens, there's a farm and there's probably a thousand chickens on screen. So we just called that one because it's unfair. <laughs> That's fair. Just That's consider. Fair. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we ended up seeing a hundred chickens that day. Wow. Totally worth it. We rode every ride that had a chicken on it. That's so great. Big Thunder has a chicken? Doesn't have a chicken on it? Somewhere? No chicken. No chicken? Goats and rams. No chicken. Maybe in Disneyland. I wonder if it does in Disneyland. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to ride it again and look, but based on the POVs that we did, we did some research. We did not see a chicken. Maybe there is one. You know? No, I'm going to be looking for chickens at Disneyland. It's going to be good times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. I'll have to find something different to look All right. for. Yeah. Oops. All right, uh, you hang up. <laughs> <laughs> no, you hang up. No, really, I need to go. I, I got to go do some packing yeah. so I can go. Yeah, go pack, go have a great trip. And uh, thank you so much for everybody uh, enjoying yet another episode about the Haunted Mansion. Uh, there'll be more, but we'll take a break for a bit. And uh, thank you for hanging on to this series. This is so much fun. And uh, Kate, I always learn from you, and I super appreciate it because it enriched and deepened my love for my favorite attraction. So I look forward to doing things that maybe I don't have a big, deep love for and then grow a bigger, much bigger appreciation for. Um, You know, like a brick on a sidewalk. I'll be like, did you know that story about that brick? Oh, my gosh, that diamond brick. We're going to figure that Mm -hmm. out. We'll Mm -hmm. find it. We'll We'll find find it. it. So, yep. All right, guys. You have a great night, and thank you for hanging out here. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. (laughs) See ya. Bye. Of course, there's always my way out.